following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verana Media Network. Hello and welcome to another episode on Gen XYZ. Now, as you all know, this is a program where we focus on the youth and issues or topics based on the youth, pertaining issues per se. Now, I would like to start off with a question. Have you been in a situation where you were totally under pressure or moving at 300 kilometers per hour where you needed to make quick decisions that actually could change your life or people? You know, this is what we are actually going to talk about today, about the focus of your mind and concentration. And to talk about this, we have an expert with us. He's actually an Israeli, but who has a lot of close connections with Sri Lanka. And he's, he's very popular in the international stage. And now I feel that, you know, he's stepping up to, you know, promote himself and share his knowledge on mind concentration. So with that explanation, I would like to invite Guy Rosenberg. Uh, thank you very much. And he's a mind control specialist and also a concentration specialist. Guy, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time uh, out of your busy schedule to join us on the program today and I'm really excited to you know have this discussion with you now first of all to start off the discussion why don't you tell our audience who you exactly are like I know that you're from Israel you've started off doing business but now you're here you're a meditation specialist you have learned the art of you know focusing your mind on particular things so how did you do that? How did you come into this pe uh, um, field? Um, like more, more than 20 years ago, I was dealing with business. Uh, I having like a kind of, I was like participating uh, in some family business and business of my own. And uh, I was felt like even like a few years before, like I was depressed a little bit. And I had like a kind of a, like a problem with my moods, so and I cannot handle it anymore. Although I have like many many things, all the the luxury and the things, and I was more or less completing my my golden business and things, and it's not like. A, and then I know now, all over the years, I know that I have all these problem because uh, because of my attention order. And I was uh, hyperactive, you know, until now. I cannot read of it, you know, you burn with this and that's it, it's done. But you can manage it much, much better. So I couldn't accept my life as a kind of a depressed person. And I wanted to make a really big change. I'm a kind of a, you know how to go all the way with my things. You can call it a kind of a fanatic in a way when I want something. So I, it was a kind of a process of few weeks that then I decided that I'm leaving everything with business, with all my friends, associates, everything. I want to make a cut and I want to dedicate my life to solve this problem. And I start to search the things and uh, I start with jogging. And I, by the way, the physical element in the jogging was not important here. What was important is the mind. Okay, so I was getting kind of a release from my moods, from my depressing or from my like bad moods, we will call it, okay. And then I used to run very slowly for hours, like until six, seven hours every day. Okay, like I was dividing the practice for two time and then after that, I was doing kind of a stretching because to run six, seven hours, even very slow, it can destroy your body like every day because it's not kind of for the physical element to, to be in a good shape. It's about to heal my mind, but the body don't understand, you know, he's getting hit. So I used to do kind of a stretching and some yoga teacher at the time was 
correct me a little bit and she told me that my stretching is look like a little bit like a kind of a yoga posture. So I was not familiar with yoga at the time and not, certainly not from in meditation. So I took her tip a little bit and then she's occasionally start to train me a little bit and to show me things because she saw me in the park running all the time and after do the stretching. And, um, and then she started teaching me and after like a, after like a kind of a, like a few weeks, she fired me. She told me, guy, you cannot be my student anymore because you are too intensive in your practice. So you practice now six, seven, eight hours a day yoga and some kind of a like a kind of a like a beginning meditation techniques. And I'm practicing maybe three or four hours a week. So maybe you will find yourself another teacher because I cannot handle this intensity because you have too much questions and too much knowledge that you want to grab. For me, I cannot handle it in a good way. So she told me, and I believe that you cannot find yourself here in Israel, so you better go to India. Maybe you will find some good teachers who can guide you and can handle your intensivity. So I went to India after like one or two months, and then uh, I was actually disappointed there very much because I was kind of joining to the kind of ashram of yogis of tourism things, and right away, I spoke with the teacher there and I, I just left the place because I cannot handle it because I was at the time like, like practicing like 10 hours every day and the teacher didn't practice like one hour a day and he was like not so serious in the subject. So, and then some, some yogis around Rishikesh, which is a lot of yogis there, told me, you want the real deal, so go in this road from Rishikesh climb the mountains a little bit, few kilometers, and maybe you will have the chance to see some yogis, and they warn me. Guy, those guys sometimes are not so pleasant guys, and they're not so nice, and they not will welcome you so easily, so be prepared for this, okay? Took it in consider, and I start to walk, and I walk like every day, like maybe five, six, seven kilometers, like slowly, and searching for the thing, some yogis on the road like have like a small, small, like very rubbish houses and they used to live there. This is part of the process, like not the attachment to live on like a kind of a, like sometimes on the roads and certainly not to live in a luxury life. Okay, this is like totally, for them it's against the thing. So I met some few of them and like I warned, they were not pleasant at all. They will actually like, like try to rid of me like every, every opportunity they had. But when they saw that I'm very, very serious, so they let me stay there with them. Like I used to stay with them like one yogi is after like after a few days, I would, used to walk a little bit and join venture with another yogi. And then they say, we don't teach you, you just sit with us. And they want to see if I'm serious or not. Because, you know, many, many tourists come to them and ask them questions and things, and they are very busy in their practices. They cannot really help or, or, or assist people who are not serious, who just want to experience the things for a few hours for the, for the general knowledge. I was totally in the, the process, and they recognize it. And they actually kind of, uh, I can call it kind of uh, adopt me with sharing the knowledge. So then I stayed with them a few months. And uh, I will start to practice like very serious way. I used to dress like them already and, and, and I was like totally in. And actually I become uh, like them in a way that people ask me question after like uh, the tourists ask me because they think that I can be kind of a link to the yogi because I speak the English and things. But I find myself not so nice at, at all because you know, I find myself like they're not serious and they distract me on my practices. So then I realize and I understand some yogis who can be some rude a little bit. But this is not for meanness. This is like come from other places because they're so busy in the practices. And some monks can be like this as well. 
So I don't judge those things because they don't know you and that's it. So I practice there back and forth, few months in India, few months in Israel, few months in India, few months in Israel. And, and I was having the knowledge and I would become like a kind of a hardcore petitioner in yoga. And um, all these yogis poses, which called asana, was a very small part of the training. So most of the training was sitting meditation and breathing techniques, which is called a pranayama. Okay. And I was actually from then after like maybe more than one year, I was actually dedicate my life only for this. Nothing. I did nothing. Only this. Totally. And after a few, like maybe after like a, one more year of practicing this, I, we decided for you yogis to visit Sri Lanka. I don't know why we chose Sri Lanka as a, to visit kind of a Buddhist and to experience uh, the monastery here. So we came to Sri Lanka and we had like a not such a good experience with Sri Lanka because we came and, and went to the wrong monastery for the first time. And we said, this is not possible. This is Buddhist monks should be specialized in meditation and the techniques and they should dedicate their life for meditation. And I don't see the things. Maybe we don't understand. Maybe they practice some other techniques that we should not, don't understand in our, in our point of view. But we know that even the Buddhists, uh, that the yogis taught the Buddha the techniques. So it should be more or less the same things. We should understand the things, but we didn't. So after that, we traveled a little bit in Sri Lanka and we occasionally found some jungle monasteries. And then it was like a little bit different. So people uh, really dedicate their life for meditation, for the techniques, and actually do all the efforts to be in the moment now. Like, not to be in the past, not to be in the future. So this is all about the Buddhism. And then, uh, those monastery was impressing for us because we are totally different petitioners than monks. And we are kind of a monk, but more Hindu monk. And then we, we start to teach them the yoga, okay, the asanas. So they were really, really interesting on the asanas. So, and then we explain them, so the yogi do it because they need to maintain the body because of the sitting meditation is damage the back, damage the knees, damage many, many elements in the body. So you need to maintain it. This is the maintenance of the meditators. Okay. And they have a lot, a lot of other benefits as well which is, <laughs> I can speak from now until the morning about the benefits of the, of the poses, only the poses. And then we taught them the pranayama, the, the breathing techniques. So, and then they will impress a lot. So we used to come back and forth. Some few yogis, after the yogis would give up a little bit, so I used to come back and forth to Sri Lanka, and slowly, slowly I was, I was slow down the traveling to India. And then I was traveling in Sri Lanka and experienced many, many jungle temples and some kind of a, like a different monks. So, or even in the, in the monastery in the city or in the small villages, which are not considered to be kind of a jungle monks, still sometimes you find like top, top quality, sometimes. And I had a chance to find some qualities there, but the real quality in my opinion, in a kind of a practical petitioner, I found it in the jungle temples. And I was hooked with this because the yogi sometimes are very, like a kind of a walking on cloud. So uh, when I say walking on cloud, so they're not precise with the practices. Okay, so if they need to do it, like I have kind of a mission in, uh, in the morning, so this today i'm going to practice like five or six hours meditation sitting meditation and i will do another like one hour of pranayama practices like breathing practices and i will do like kind of a one hour asanas and walking meditation another like a, another two hours and that's it i have a goal and i do it 
the yogi doesn't work like this. Sometimes they wake, wake up in the middle of the practice because they have kind of a, like a inspire on something in the dreams, in the thoughts, in the things. So, so I couldn't accept it. So when I sit and I start something, I have to finish it. So in my point of view, stars can fall down. It doesn't matter for me. I just finish my practices. When it's good and it's bad, if the quality is low, it doesn't matter for me. I just finish it and that's it. In a, and to make most of it. All right, guys. Before we continue with the discussion, I think we have to uh, go into a short commercial break. I think you started off with giving a very good introduction, a very elaborate one. But before we continue, let's go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen XYZ and we will be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we were in discussion with Guy Rosenberg who is the mind control specialist. Now Guy, in the first whole session you explained who you are, your journey throughout your meditation process, the way you try to attain these skills within yourself and how you trained in India, in Israeli and how you came here to Sri Lanka. What actually you know hit me was your dedication into this meditation because when considering young people here in Sri Lanka, I would say, you know, meditation is, you know, a waste of time. It's very boring. I don't understand the value of meditation. Every time I close my eyes and think about something, it's hard for me to concentrate. You know, they don't actually understand the purpose of meditation. But you, you've dedicated your whole life into this and you believe that this is, you know, very helpful in a person's life and you know it helps people concentrate especially with sportsmen i mean here in sri lanka you work with the lantamalagamu as well the international racer and you've trained a lot of famous sportsmen as well so uh, can you tell me the importance of this and how it's helpful in one's life yeah first of all uh, about the youngsters with i'm really connected to the to the young people in sri lanka and i can understand it that sometimes the Buddhism can be quite traditional and not open, okay? Like, um, I'm coming and I'm more connected to the Mahayana approach on the Buddhism, so it's like sometimes it's a little bit different in the Mahayana, I have like a lot of flow as well, but, but, but part of it is like, a, the, for instance, the Shaolin monk, or the Zen monk in Japan, uh, they used to practice, uh, or the samurai, or the ninjas, they all meditation petitioner. They are all monks, war monk, and they would do many, many other mental practices, some other routine practices. It was sort like they were not practicing only Buddhism, like 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 pure Buddhism, it was like a it like mix of practice. And there was a lot of physical element as well. Okay, so through the physical element, through the exercise, they used to meditate. So in other words, if you will take the youngsters in Sri Lanka, suddenly if I will start to join like the street games of cricket, and I will show them that in the middle of the game, the middle of the play, they can meditate actually they can uh, make some concentration exercise through the games. And if I will show some youngsters that you can make kind of a race driving and meditate in the same time. And if you make some tricks with the motorcycles, you can meditate as well. So you just need to change a little bit the mindset here. So everything can be meditation here. And it's open like a totally new level of practices, okay? It's not only when you meditate, so people imagine like people sitting in a lotus posture on the floor and close their eyes and concentrate, okay? So this is one thing, this is very, very important exercise. But we have so many exercises. So for me, it's a walking meditation, talking meditation, eating meditation, everything can be meditated. So I was actually develop kind of a techniques for meditating in while I'm driving, okay? So 
even traffic gym can be a wonderful practice in meditation. So it's people, very stressful. What, very stressful. I know. I know it's stressful, but when you know how to concentrate on, the, on this moment, so it becomes quite nice. So sometimes we choose what is stressful and what is not. So it's the same like uh, life is not good in Sri Lanka. This is very philosophic like thing to say because maybe sometimes in this particular moment your life is not so well, so life is not good. Life is wonderful. Okay, life is like the same. So your mood is changing a little bit, so life now is not good. Next time, next day, something good happened to you and life is wonderful. So life in Sri Lanka is beautiful. So we need to understand those issues. So it's in our mind. How do you, you know, come up with these techniques? Now you train sports person. Yeah. I know that, you know, you've done a lot of projects, especially with racers. I've read your articles about, you know, uh, you training this racer and, you know, you, you have been meditating with him inside the race car in like 100 degrees Celsius, you know, in, in a very warm conditions. Yeah. Does, is it necessary for everyone to do that, you know, to put them into extreme conditions in order to, you know, set their mindset into one place? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. It's like, uh, it's like it's according to the needs of the athletes or the professional people. Um, okay, so, like, if your, if your job needs you to be concentrate without any distraction in, in a certain environment, so we need to train you to handle this distraction. And then the destruction will be nothing. So I used to train like sportsmen, some, some athletes have a big, big problem with the audience, with the noises of the audience. So they get excited a little bit. So we used to make kind of a training with some totally like audio speakers that was in the real life, in the game, was nothing to compare to the training. So I used to put some noises in those speakers that would drive them crazy. Okay, so in the mind, it's like kind of like a certain noises that you can produce can, can really distract you completely. So then we train. Like in other words, I will explain it much easier. So if I train someone to run, okay, kind of a marathon, and I used to train like marathon runners and uh, triathletes, iron men, and so on. So I will not train them regularly. I will put them some weight on the legs, okay, and train them like this. And then we take out the weight, they feel very light. So in the regular training, it will be very light for them. Okay, so this is the base of my training. So I make it hard that in the real life, it will be like a little bit more adjustable. Is it uh, important now when considering sports, you need to always, you know, keep that fitness, you know, if you lose touch, you're losing that grip of your sport. Is it the same with the mind also? Do you no. have to? No. no, no, it's not. It's not. When you train your mind, when you build something, you cannot go, you cannot go back, in other words. So, like sometimes, yeah, if you skip training for a few weeks, you need maybe one or one day or two days to get to get the gap. But once you train your mind, it doesn't go back. This is how I see it. Some people will say some other things about it, but this is how I see it. I saw about myself in some illness that I had and things, so nothing happens. You, like, you live in the, you continue from the same stage. Your training programs, they say that, you know, you continue from three to three days to three weeks. So within those three weeks time, what do you do with the, uh, with your clients? So first of all, it depends which, the, which are the clients. If they're dealing with business, if they're dealing with, uh, I don't know, like a, like a stop broker, they race drivers or they volleyball players or they football or basketball or poker player. It depends which subject they do. Uh, but we train them. We find uh, exactly the point or the, or the certain moment or certain elements which they feel very difficult, stressful, and they 
cannot control the dialogue and then we will rock on these things, always. So it's never easy here. Always it's difficult. Because you come, so the training come to me in a certain problems, so we work on this very specific problem sometimes. You need to be very professional and very precise with your goal. And you wake up in the morning, you want to be the best with a lot of ambition and a lot of like kind of a to accomplish your goal here. And if not, I don't know, people doesn't, you cannot invent this motivation because it's very demanding training in the, in the high level. When uh, considering your training also now, once you're done with the three week training, uh, will they be able to do it by themselves? Always, always. I'm, I'm supporting my training, my trainers, and I believe that people should be very independent in their training. So I give the guidance, I follow up, I, I see everything is all right, I build kind of a structure of training, and then they need to practice by their own. So this is subject, all this subject of mind controlling, meditation, you need to be independent. So some people want to always training or practice with a group. Uh, I can understand. I can understand. But uh, to go in a, like a to different level, you need to be very independent. You will see all the, some of the monks and especially the yogis, they are very lonely people. And I was very, very lonely at the time because this is part of the practice. You need to handle yourself. When you handle yourself, like in other words, some people need to talk all the time because then they don't deal with themselves. I like only to deal with myself. So to handle with this dialogue, to control, to reduce it, and this is the purpose here, I think. And when considering concentration, again, I feel that, you know, a lot of things are linked with one another, especially when coming to sports. Now, as you said, you're focusing on the concentration of mind. But one's mind, their thoughts can differ from what they experienced in the past or what they have gone through in the morning. So do you address those issues as well or uh, how does it work? When you, when you control your mind and you know how to concentrate on the moment or or on a certain object, it doesn't matter which problem you had before. Okay, sometimes uh, in the mind, it's actually, it's more or less the same. It's a kind of a, we can maybe compare it to kind of a volume. Okay, volume of destruction in the mind. So, like, sometimes you had like a kind of an issue with your partner. Sometimes you had a kind of an issue with your, with your kids. Or... You financial issues. Financial anything. issues, like, a, like in a very, very top critical game or, or kind of a, you need to perform the best some like a half an hour before, like, a, like um, you get like a terrible, devastating news. It doesn't matter. Like the high level will come to perform. We will forget everything. We'll concentrate only on the moment after he finish this activity, you can cry, you can do whatever you like, it doesn't matter. But the ability to concentrate and to eliminate those issues, this is the most critical thing. You know, in the highest level of sports, business and other, nobody really, fortunately, nobody really cares what you had before and which, other pro which problems you're dealing at this moment. You know, they just want to see your performance. Okay, so... So is it no, no excuses, in other words. Is it actually possible to do that? Because for me, oh, yeah. I find it impossible because every time you're working on something and you know that there's a problem at home or at work, so it's, it's really hard to do. But it is possible, yeah? Oh, yes, it's so possible that you cannot believe. And uh, in, your, in your... How you, you look at it, how you... Deal with it because you just don't know the techniques and you don't have enough experience of training to understand the way how to solve this problem. And it's not easy, you know, to eliminate your mind, to, the thought, and to reduce the dialogue. You, you, you need to train yourself. So it's a kind of a training. And sometimes it's very demanding. And then it depends how much you want, which stage you want to get. 
So you want to be like top, top professional, you want to be like a kind of in a middle range, it depends. Long as you will train more, you will have like a better result. I want to ask you now, what does actually matter, mind or matter? Mm, uh, pardon? Um, what plays the most important role? Is it your concentration or is it the moment you're in, your external factors? I been, you know, this is like a, I'm maybe the wrong guy to ask him this question because my toolbox is very limited. I believe only in the ability of the mind. For me, the body is, is nothing. You need, you need to maintain the body in the highest level that he will serve your mind in the highest level. It depends on, in the same with the nutrition, the sense of the quantity of the food that you eat and how you sleep and so on. So it's all this package built to support like a better performance for the mind. All right, guys, let's continue this discussion. And after the break, we will definitely talk about your experience here in Sri Lanka with the sportsmen here and the sportsmen you've worked with abroad as well. But before that, let's go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen XYZ and we will be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Guy Rosenberg who is a mind control specialist and in the first two segments we spoke about your journey in meditation and the projects you're working with and the people you've dealt with and uh, how to build up on that Guy. Um, what do you think the method of meditation, the technique of meditation would differ from person to person and from uh, career to career or basically sports person to business person? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's totally different and uh, I'm building kind of a tailor-made techniques for every, each of the professional people. Yes, generally in the beginning, like maybe one or two lessons, first lessons, it can be general lessons and then it can be suitable for all, like for all society. But then we need to go to kind of a niche that everyone have their own problems, their own issues, their own things that they can lose in control and the mind become understandable. And then we need to attack it and to work in some angles that will suitable only for this person, not, not for the other. Okay, so it's a kind of a tailor-made, absolutely. For example, if you're having to train a team, maybe a cricket team or a football team, do you still train them individually? Uh, I start, like, a, like I said, like a first or second class, like the same, like generally, kind of a lecture. And then we need to divide them to small groups and after we divide them for individuals. Okay. Like uh, to tailor-made it, some people have like a kind of a mechanism of hyperactive people some people are more relaxed so it's a kind of a different training but i don't want that it will sound so difficult and so it's very easy and very simple okay the training um and i want to know now since you have experience with working with people abroad and sportsmen abroad and also people here in sri lanka um, as an expertise ex uh, expert what can you describe about, you know, the mindsets we have abroad and here in Lanka? Which uh, set was easy for you to maintain? I believe the mindset uh, here, it's better than abroad. And I believe people uh, have much more knowledge about the mind. Even the lowest professional, like I will not say the lowest, but uh, even if you can say I had some sometimes chats over the years with even the cleaners in the street. They understand the mind much more than president and prime ministers abroad. Okay, so they just understand the things. And uh, 
I believe all the knowledge is in Sri Lanka. I assume that people just don't do their homework enough. So you believe Sri Lankans have a stronger mindset? Very strong mindset. Why do you say so? Because I see it. I see it all over the world and I see maybe uh, uh, because this uh, Buddhist atmosphere that you have in this country and, and I believe it's effect on the people to understand the most basic things, how to maintain the mind. Uh, Guy, now, when dealing with different people, you've dealt with so many different people with different mentalities. What's your experience with young people? Have you ever dealt with them or trained them? Yeah, yeah. I had experience to train young monks in Sri Lanka and very few young kids as well here that living like a kind of a regular life it's like a kind of a school student and because I came from a kind of a ADD, ADHD and hyperactive, like extreme hyperactive background, so I know how to handle these issues. So because it's touched to my heart and I know I solve in a way my problems of hyperactive or you don't solve it. Once you have once you're hyperactive, I see it like a kind of a blessing. Uh, so those kids who are having a tough time at home and school and and sometimes and not sometimes most of the time the, and all the people around know that those kids are very intelligent kids but people cannot handle it so the system cannot handle it at home they cannot handle it because the energy let's imagine kind of a pipe the energy is leaking a little bit because of those problems so again, the meditation can be focus them and those energy can be like a missile, okay? And when it's not leaking. So I see like the top, top potential on those youngsters. Was it easy for you to train the young people compared to the older ones? Because as far as I know, young, uh, small children are crazy you know they have so many things in their mind going on and they can't just concentrate and you know they are very hyperactive as as you said and they are very intelligent it's just difficult for them to you know focus on one thing and concentrate so was it what's your experience with dealing with young children first of all i look to you like a kind of a normal person so like unnormal to unnormal very easy so i like to play games as well Okay, so we used to train together. So I used to train with them and we used to play games, like a kind of a balance games all the times. So when they in balance, when they need to walk on kind of a like a very sleepy floor, for instance, in, a, in kind of a rocks, so they will be concentrate a lot because they doesn't want to hurt themselves. So the concentration taking place. So we used to do a lot of kind of a, like a kind of a extreme, easy extreme game to give them kind of the ability to concentrate. And this was part of the training. What are your other experiences, Guy? Like, do you uh, deal with individuals as well? Or is it just sportsmen, business people, young yes, children? Yes, we deal, we deal with, the, with the individual. I used to have projects with all kinds of human and and actually uh, would you like to share one or two experiences you've had like the people you've dealt with yeah uh, for, for example I used to uh, train people that uh, like to climb trees okay without any protection okay this is their hobby you cannot argue with this they need to be totally concentrated because they are really sometimes in a really big dangers. They fall from the trees, they can lose it, they can break all the body. So, uh, you know, everyone, everyone from the, even if you have like a kind of a, let's say, regular job, there is no regular job, there is no regular people. Everyone is special. Everyone have like kind of a certain needs 
and I can define the needs and to work with him and to improve his skills in his things that he likes to do or would like to, to accomplish in life. So really, I really truly believe that everyone is very, very special. It's not like I want to define my things that I'm working only with very professional people and famous. And this is not the case. Because mostly, mostly, they are very serious in the things, okay? But, you know, for me, if you have a goal, and if you have like a kind of a to accomplish and you like to walk on the certain, uh, I don't know, certain wall or things, I will help you to improve your concentration and you will have a better result. In order to have a fully concentrated mind, you know, a stable mindset, uh, it's kind of difficult. And especially I feel the people in Sri Lanka right now, you know, they're going through a lot of problems right now. The economic crisis, like before that, they had the COVID pandemic also. And now still the country is also not in a stable position. What do you think the main reason is for people to, you know, wear their mindsets down? And how do they find that, you know, small doorway to just get out? Not to get out. Get out. We, they need to get in. <laughs> so the get out is not for me. They get in. They need more to get in on the mind and to deal with reasonable, like, in other words, don't, don't deal with too many things with your mind at the time. So separate the things, okay? And don't make your mind so busy with like a very strict routine. So get loose a little bit and keep the sleeping when you go to sleep. So before the sleep, you relax a little bit and you don't kind of a watch like a kind of a action or extreme or I don't know, like terrible movies or terrible stories before you go to sleep. So there is a certain things that you need to, to maintenance the things and there is a line of things of how to maintain the physical elements, how to, main the, the, how to build kind of a menu, how to build the nutrition quite well and not to eat too much before you go to sleep. There is certain rules that, that mostly the monks know how to deal with it and, and the yogis as well. And in other words, I would like to say that all the knowledge is here, even in the nutrition, like the old days used to eat like very strict here without any junk food that what they have here now, like the motto, most, more or less is a junk food here. There is a, so many junk food restaurants, which I totally don't support it. Okay, and, and just to understand that uh, when your mind is functioning in the highest level, everything will be in the highest level. Do you think a person's lifestyle also affects the way a person thinks? Like, for example, what you eat, what you do, what you watch before you go to sleep? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And do you believe in, you know, uh, it's an article which I read, you don't promote uh, digital, uh, use of digital applications or your electronic devices? No, I, 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 I totally support. It's not that I don't support, but I don't support it for people who do it for the fun. Okay, if you have like a certain purpose, if you need to promote yourself or promote your business or promote your charity organization or, or, or so on, it's totally fine. But people are like, in other words, living like other people's stories. This is totally wrong. You need to deal with your own things and to sometimes to leave the phone. Leave like, in other words, the social media alone. Okay, and don't like be obsessed with this. Okay, you wake up in the morning, you don't need to grab your phone immediately, so relax a little bit. Like, uh, like you, you need to have kind of a certain limit with it, like certain strict rules, and everyone should define the rules according to his needs and capability. Okay, there is no like a certain mechanism here. All right, Guy, I think we are reaching the end of our program as well as my last question. Will you be able to give our viewers out there a little, you know, hint or some techniques that they can practice every day just be before they go to work or as soon as they wake up or just before they do something really critical, for example, even a sport? A, a general technique where they can, you know, concentrate and get their mind to focus. 
Okay, you know, it's like, uh, it's like sometimes I listen, I hear some coach, like in the team or, and say to the trainers, you need to concentrate. So sometimes I ask them, do you know how to concentrate? How to? So this is a kind of a, like, a, like a knowledge that people, yogis and monks, dedicate their life for concentration techniques. So if I need to recommend or to give some tips, like in a very general, so try to do one thing at a time, not to mix so many things. And when you have time, when you're alone, try to breathe very, very slowly. And you will see the effect. All right. Again, thank you so much, Guy. I think we've come to You're the end of our program as well. And I wish you all the very best. I hope that, you know, you will be able to reach out to so many people who are facing this trouble. I think Sri Lanka also needs that right now because they're also going through so many troubles right now and they need to focus on what they're doing in order to make anything work. Again, thank you very much and I wish you all the very best. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another topic or issues relating the youth and just in case you can watch us on there you can always re-watch on our youtube channel youtube.com slash English so until then see you soon take care and have a good night